After getting the hood strut and hood hinge installed, I was still in the mindset of actually diagnosing and working on Rita. So I looked up on the Riata Owners Journal website, riataowner.com. They're not a sponsor or anything, but they're a great help. And looked up how to diagnose the actual engine on a 1989 Buick Riata. And it's actually quite simple. You go into the climate change settings and hold down off and warm and you enter the service mode. Here you can actually see some of my errors, the current ones and the past ones that are coming up. From here, you can actually do a whole lot more than just look at your codes. The diagnose, the, excuse me, the service mode of a Buick Riata from this era actually gives you many of the same functions that you actually get on those really expensive $500, $1,000 or more diagnosing tools. And it allows you to view things like your oxygen sensor, your fuel rail, all sorts of stuff in real time. But while I was playing with this, Carl and Kit heard a sucking noise coming from the engine area on the Riata. Okay, so what did you guys do so far? Well, we found a bunch of vacuum connectors that have been rotten out there. This little piece of the vacuum line that whole lines together. Well, the one going to this was rotten out, whatever this is, which I'm not real sure without looking it up. And then the one coming off of this that goes to this connector line is rotted off. And the other end of this connector line is rotted off somewhere, and I've got to figure out where it went to. Because it went to something over here. What are you talking about? Okay. Huh? This line has uh, disconnected from wherever it was connected when I was messing with it. So now we got to figure out where it was connected to. All right. Well, going through while he was doing the diagnostic, me and Kit heard hisses coming from under here. We tracked down the hisses to coming from this control mo control relay of some kind to these two vacuum lines and then back to the air feed tube under here. They had connectors that were, well, you can see that one's completely falling apart. There was more to that one and this one is, you know, gone. And so they weren't holding anymore. So we replaced it. I cut some vacuum hose and made new connectors and reconnected that, that, and then the line under here, Kit was able to get to it. Back, way back under, actually goes to the air feed for this. I'm just shooting the everything fender. now, so yeah. hopefully... You yeah, you can kind of see the, the tube there. This tube right there, you can kind of see going under here. It's not the part that comes out of the fender. No, it's way back here, underneath the air box. Because you wiggled something. I'm like, oh, I didn't like the way you wiggled it. Well, that's the line that actually ran there. Oh, okay. That was the line we had to reconnect. Okay. So, we've solved the vacuum leak issue on those, so, but you'll run into that a lot on these old vehicles. You'll get, especially if they have a hard line to a hard line and they use a soft connector, all these soft connectors go bad and rot. You can see this is one where someone's put silicone over it to connect it and seal it, but you're going to be going through and refixing those to solve all your vacuum leaks on these older cars with a lot of vacuum. But just listen for hiss, or you can use uh, smoke to tell where it's being pulled in. You can also sometimes use brake clean or starter fluid or something, and if it's for the ignition part of the system, to see if it revs up when you hit the spot. If it revs up and you hit the spot with vacuum, it revs up. That tells you you got a air suck going into the intake. He's somewhere mm -hmm. in the fuel system. Okay carburetor system or fuel injector system on this one throttle body that kind of stuff so that's just a quick one just all those little fixes and they are if you get worried about looking for the connectors it just get some vacuum line and cut it down because the odds of actually finding proper connectors are slim to none so normally you just end up cutting a piece of vacuum line down to fit that's all they are is vacuum line anyway mm -hmm, aren't they? it is so vacuum leak has it running better? We were worried that the uh, throttle position sensor that we replaced the old one with was a bad one. And uh, it looks like it may have just been those vacuum leaks. Uh, something you always got to watch, especially on older engines, is check all your vacuum lines and see if any of them have started to rot. 
and are falling apart because you get vacuum leaks and you'll get engine running bad and it's kind of hard to figure out why. So the sucking was making it suck. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now you'll have to go over your diagnostic thing because that wasn't me. <laughs> well, again, go into the climate menu, hold down off and warm. And what you'll get is the first level of diagnostics. It's going to be your basic scan tool, $20 scan tool, essentially. And it'll give you your codes. And then it'll ask ECM, yes or no. You say yes, and it'll go into a deeper level of diagnostics, which is going to be the real live data from your all sorts of sensors on your engine. Of course, it ain't going to be the 32 million, gabillion, gajillion that some of these more well-known mechanics on YouTube talk about with their $10,000 scan tools, but it's for the five or six that you got on your engine there. Hey, it's impressive for an 80s scan of any kind. Yes. <laughs> it's very impressive for a late 80s, early 90s scan of any kind. It's a lot better than what my Buick will give you. It just does Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, so, and... From there, you can actually go to deeper level stuff. Like I said, um, I'll link the page, and and I've showed it in the video already. Riata Owner Journal Online, RiataOwner.com. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, but they've been a great help with all the resources they put up for this. So I just want to thank them, essentially, for doing that. That's all I got. Um, let's see. And we have the... The struts are still holding. Yes. So that's a big improvement. Even if they are cheap struts and they'll bleed out in a few years, they're still a whole lot better than what, the dead ones that were on there. A few years. I give it I give it six months. Honestly, <laughs> too. I give it six months. No, I give it to next winter when we have one of those minus 10, minus 20 degree days. Maybe that, too. <laughs> uh, but, hey, it fixes it. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's... That's all we did, right? That's all we did in this one, yeah. I apologize. I'm doing too many projects at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> A bit scatterbrained, yes. <laughs> well, that'll be it for this one. Until next time, like, share, uh, torture somebody with it, enjoy something. Subscribe, <laughs> Subscribe. please. Subscribe. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. <laughs> Until next time. Y'all have a good one. So long.